Welcome back to Indiana News Desk. Well, as fall kicks into full swing, so does tourism around the state. Small towns come alive with out-of-town visitors. My colleague Miranda Fulmore joins us now with more. Thanks, Jill. AAA reports that across the country, travel is up. In the fall, a family road trip is the most popular vacation, and increasingly it's because of fall festivals and seasonal events, something there's no shortage of in Indiana. Tucked in between cornfields and hidden down one-lane dirt roads, the covered bridges are what sets Park County apart from other rural areas of the state. The reason we have so many bridges, geographic is right for them, but also the financial situation of a poor county like this really demanded that they keep what they have and make the best use of them. It's a quiet adventure today, hunting for the 31 bridges that dot the countryside. But you could call it the calm before the storm. Two million people, that's a half million more than attend the Indianapolis 500, will flood into the area over the next 10 days for the largest covered bridge festival in the country. And most people are really proud of their county. They're proud that we're able to pull this off and do this kind of a thing. And you have 10 days in October that you can just show off what you have and where you live and, and what people like to see. Farming is the main economic driver here, but right behind it, tourism. And so what this festival does for us the estimate is about $15 million are, are left in Park County after the Covered Bridge Festival in the hands of people who buy things. Aside from the bridges, one of the most highly trafficked spots during the festival is Mike Rose Mill. It looks like an image you might see on a postcard. People come here for the flour, ice cream, and purple grits. Rowe depends on the profit he makes during the festival to sustain his family for the whole year. It's, it's unbelievable. There's no way my wife and I could do this without that festival. Uh, like I said, Millard had to give me half the money to buy the darn place. The foot traffic from Rose Mill feeds into the antique shops and ice cream parlors that sit idle for the other 50 weeks of the year. In addition to brick and mortar businesses, it's estimated that more than 700 vendors come out to sell homemade goods and crafts. Some locals even rent their property. People renting out their front yard, their barns and stuff, uh, and it's just a sea of white canopies, you know, everywhere. And uh, over here, now there's a 90-acre field over there, and the farmer's daughter started out with like a 15-acre parking lot. Then it's 20, then it's 25. I think she's up to about 30 now. Then another guy over here, he just tripled his. And all together, we probably have, I'd say, 120, 130 acres of parking. On the weekend, we run out of room. Out of the 31 covered bridges in the county, all but five are open to regular traffic. Most of the bridges date back to the 1800s, and the county works hard to maintain them. The state helps some. The county gets about $1,200 per bridge each year for preservation. But Meese says that leaves a lot of burden to the county, and some residents question whether they're worth maintaining. It's always tough to sustain or even to justify sustaining Things like this, uh, covered bridges certainly, unless you understand and realize how economically significant it is to the people who live there. Um, Park County would really be suffering, I think, if we didn't have that $15 million of new money ingested in our economy every year. And if we didn't have these bridges, you wouldn't have that festival. So I think people realize it's all tied together. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Miranda Fulmore.